Welcome back to Vintage Diecast Restoration. This is part three in our giveaway video series. So if you missed parts one and part two, head back to the video section and check those out. Uh, we're doing a giveaway on the channel. I took uh, three cars from my collection that were earlier placeholder pieces and did full restorations of them. And we're gonna give away two of them here on the channel. So for part three, we are doing the reassembly. And up first here is the Lark Wagoneer. Um, assembly on this model is fairly straightforward. You do wanna make sure you drop in the uh, sliding panel on the roof first because the glass actually holds it in place when it goes in. So we do the top panel, then the glass, and then the interior. Um, I did not make any changes or edits to this uh, base model at all, um, but I did spend a fair amount of time with some polishing compound and my buffing wheel just to get that shined up to a mirror-like finish. Um, and so that's going to drop right in. And I do have the color match screws. These are the screws that were in the model when I painted it. Um, I always put the screws in before I paint. One, it helps keep the uh, the threads clear of any overspray or paint. Um, and two, it really looks nice. It looks close to the original rivets um, on most models. And I'm going to make sure I get the right screw back in the right hole because they are different lengths. Um, so I wanted to see what this looks like with the painted screws and the polished base because I wasn't really sure if I wanted to leave them painted. Um, and that just looks too much like a screw to me. The uh, You can see these little M2 screws, they've got the little divot in there, but uh, the painted ones just looked out of place on the polished base. And so I've gone ahead and I've replaced the painted screws with just the standard uh, stainless steel M2 screws. And I really like the way that those look a lot better. Um, you can see that the top on the back is fully operable, uh, slides in, slides out, just like the original model. So we know we've got everything squared away inside and put back together. Now, I'm not quite done on this because you can see the casting has a lot of these little details around. And if you've watched some of my other restorations, you know that I like uh, highlighting some of those. I also have this one little spot right here on the door and if you remember from part two, this color was insanely hard to mix. And so I don't think I'm going to be able to touch that up. Um, I might try a little buffing compound on there and going over it with a soft uh, buffing wheel to see if that gets it out. That has the chance of also uh, just coming off. But um, for the assembly for the second model, I've got the little Bedford tipper here. And... So you can see this one came out just gorgeous. The, the paint is really glossy, shiny. I'm really pleased with this model. This is uh, the oldest of the three models. This is a first generation or a Series A matchbox. And uh, it has the metal wheels and the crimped axles. And so I kept all the original parts. Um, all of these wheels are the, the same wheels that I took off. The axles are the same axles. And uh, if you remember right on the crimping, um, I just use a pair of needle nose and a lot of pressure in my hands to get those to go back to the crimped ends. Um, if you're gentle with it and you're very careful, it's a good way to remove these axles without damaging them. If I were to try to dremel those, um, the, the crimped ends off, I wouldn't have enough material to work with when I wanted to put it back together. And so I squeeze uh, across to the uh, crimp to make it more of a square instead of a flat end. And then uh, it's just lining it back up with whichever direction was the original crimp. And after you've made that metal move a couple times, um, it kind of wants to go back to where it was. And so I don't usually have too many problems. Um, if you don't have the hand strength to do it, um, I've also seen some restorers use a, a vice grip and they'll set the depth on the vice grip. Now, this model is a little bit uh, unique because a lot of the later models had a pin that held this bucket on the back, and this one, it's built into the casting. And as near as I can tell, uh, they actually just bent 
the base castings to get them to fit. Um, as old as this is, I'm very worried about doing that. So I'm going to try to do this on camera um, and see if I can just very, very gingerly bend that little tab up. Not a lot, just enough to clear the hole and see if we can work that down in there. Now, once I get it clear, bending it back out is very easy. Um, I've seen a couple different restorers use a method, and I'm going to try to duplicate it here. And then just take a, a pair of needle nose, and you put them inside the frame, and then just work to open them out. Um, and it doesn't take very much pressure, and that will force the, the pins back out and give you a nice tight fit on the bucket on the back. So this one just absolutely turned out incredible. I, I really love these older metal wheel models, and this one is definitely a treat for someone. Now, last but not least, uh, this VW van really gave me a lot of trouble. Um, the glass, if you remember right, was in really sad shape. It cleaned up pretty good. There's one little spot on the top that I couldn't get out, um, but I'd rather have the original glass with that than a reproduction. The base, um, I believe originally it was painted, but for all these giveaways, I wanted to do this mirror, poli mirror polished finish on the base, and this one really turned out nice. Um, again, the original wheels and axles, all I've done is clean them up and put them back together. The interior, if you remember, was missing the table in it. And so I used a little piece of styrene and made a new table and then painted it all to match the original orange. The casting itself, here you can see um, how close to square I got it. These two A-pillars um, ended up breaking off when I tried to straighten it all and get it all out. And you can see the middle one is still a little bit off. Um, Whatever kind of trauma happened to this thing, I don't know if somebody stepped on it or it got slammed in a car door. Um, I mean, it was really out of whack and it took a lot of work to get it back in. And then last but not least, our uh, reproduction doors. Um, these things were a bear to get uh, into the van. Um, you can see here we've, we've got them out. Um, I was not really able to show this process on camera. Uh, because it it just fought me every little bit. Um, as you can see, they're held in with uh, two little pins, one on the top, one on the bottom. And normally this bottom piece is riveted in place after the doors are in place. Um, obviously, I did not have the, the luxury of being able to pull that off. Um, and so I, I had to really work at it and couldn't film it. But I was able to get um, everything all reassembled. And uh, the, the one door's a little loose, but I, I think it's going to stay in. After I got the doors on, I noticed that I have a slightly different finish, even though all the base paint is the same, and that's because I used a really nice gloss clear coat on the main casting, and I didn't do the doors. And I didn't realize that until I'd gone through that whole process to try to get those doors in place. And I just figured, you know, if I try to take them out and clear coat them, I'm going to end up snapping one of those little pegs off and having to start all over with those doors. And uh, I know there's been a little bit of a delay in getting these videos out because it's it's just a lot of work um, to do it all and video it all and edit everything. And so um, I, I know it's not ideal um, and maybe whoever gets this wants to uh, take on that challenge of trying to add the clear coat to the door so that the finish all matches. On these rivets, these are too small for me to drill and tap. Uh, and so this one, honestly, it, it holds together just with uh, the, the tension that it's under pretty well. Um, I may add a little dab of super glue in there. Um, but again, for the giveaway, um, I'm hoping this is going out to someone who's really going to enjoy it and give it a new home. And so if they do want to take it apart, if they want to customize it, if they want to make any changes to what I've done, um, it'll be easier if I uh, leave those rivets clear, and so that's what I'm going to do. I uh, didn't have time. I try to edit these videos down so that they don't get too long. Um, I mean, we'd be here for hours if I didn't leave quite a bit on the cutting room floor. But I did want to show and go through the, the process 
of detailing out at least one of these models. All of these models are getting detailed. I'll do the paint outs for the lights and the bumpers and all that good stuff for all of the giveaway cars. And you'll see that in the reveal video um, that will be in part four. But for the VW, I wanted to show at least, you know, some of what I go through. Um, I always try to toe the line of being true to the original and true to what might have been able to come out of the Lesney factory originally. Um, and, you know, knowing that as these went down the assembly line, the, the ladies that were painting them had just a few seconds to do it. And so they weren't doing multiple colors. They weren't using uh, chrome on the bumpers like I'm able to now. So my finishes are a little nicer than, than the factory would have been. But I like to think they're in the same spirit of what Lesney would have done if they would have had all the time in the world to uh, to give to the people that were doing the assemblies on these. Um, all my finished paints are the same as what I paint the base castings in. I use the Testers enamel paints. Um, and I, I love this orange color. I think it's called tangerine. Um, and it's just like the perfect uh, shade of yellowy orange for side marker lights. Um, it's about all I use it for, and I'm still on the original jar. I did make a, a slight adjustment to it. I added a little bit of red to the, the factory color to kind of get it a little bit darker, a little more in that amber uh, color range. But this is all I use it for. It's just uh, tiny little dabs here and there on my side marker light. So I think I can probably restore uh, at least a couple hundred models before I run out of this jar and have to do that again. So you can see I'm just going to take some time here to paint in the headlights, the side markers, the turn signals, the taillights, and then we'll chrome out the VW logo on the front and the bumpers. To do the chrome, I use a uh, Molotow brand liquid chrome pen, and this is absolutely the best match for chrome in the diecast models that I have been able to find. It's got that mirrored, shiny finish when it's dry. It does take a long time for the Molotow to dry. I usually, after I do the application, I'll, I'll put it in a Tupperware container, put the lid on it, and I won't touch it for a week, week and a half at a minimum um, because it just, it, it's an ink, it's not a paint. And so I don't know whatever properties they put in it. Um, if you touch it, it'll fingerprint and you lose a little bit of that shininess. And so if you want to really keep that nice mirrored finish on it, um, it just it just has to cure out and that just takes time. Um, my only real complaint on it is that the pen is not a good applicator. Um, I think the, the tip gets gummed up with uh, dried ink on it. Maybe it's, you know, just because I go you know, a week or two in between trying to use it most of the time. Um, but for whatever reason, I've never had um, a really good luck with trying to apply it straight out of the pen. And so what I typically will do is squeeze a little bit out of the pen into the bottom of one of my mixing cups there. And uh, then I just use one of my fine detail brushes in order to do the application. I also like to go underneath the bumpers. So if anybody picks the cars up, turns them over, um, the bumper looks just like the bumper would on a real car. Um, it's gonna follow that whole roll, that wrap, all the way along uh, the sides and then down underneath. And then, as always, you know, like um, like I've done on my previous models, I like to highlight some of those casting details, the door handles, the little trim pieces. Um, we'll go ahead and shine up the ends of the axle heads here a little bit as well. Um, and, you know, I think it just makes for, in the end, uh, a little bit finer detailed model. And um, 
I, I keep going back to the Molotow as hard as it is to work with because the end results really are the best with it. I want to thank you for uh, watching this week. If you enjoyed this video, click that like button down below. Uh, if you want to keep up with the channel and all of our other things, click that subscribe, ring the bell so you get notified when we post uh, new content. And uh, as always, follow the link in the description. Vote for which one of these you would like to win. Uh, at the end of, I think at the end of this week, I'm going to do a drawing based on the followers to our Facebook page and subscribers to the channels, and I'm going to give away two of these models. So go vote.